available runways are not always hard, dry, or ideal. There are occasions when it's necessary to operate out of a soft field. Knowing that the field is soft, a pilot should prepare for takeoff prior to actually starting the engine. Review the owner's manual to determine recommended procedures, flap settings, and air speeds. All preparations for a soft field takeoff should be done while still on a firm surface. The pre-flight should be completed and flaps set before encountering the soft field. Taxiing should be continued from the ramp or firm surface right into the takeoff roll. This improves the odds on not getting stuck. While taxiing, keep the wheel full back to lighten the load on the nose gear. After checking the traffic pattern, begin the takeoff roll with the wheel back and full throttle. As the elevator becomes effective, the nose wheel will lift off the surface. When the nose wheel is clear of the ground, carefully relax back pressure to avoid an excessively high pitch attitude. Get airborne as soon as possible. As the aircraft breaks ground, level off momentarily to accelerate to best angle or best rate of climb speed. Let's look at the soft field takeoff again. The main idea of a soft field takeoff is to lift off as quickly as possible. Remember, wheel all the way back and full throttle. As the nose begins to rise, carefully reduce back pressure. Once the aircraft becomes airborne, ease the nose down and accelerate to the best angle or best rate of climb speed. If a landing area is known or suspected to be soft, survey the field. Besides looking for possible soft spots, be attentive for high grass, objects, or obstructions which might endanger a landing. Soft fields call for landing the aircraft as slowly and lightly as possible. Set the flaps according to the conditions and the type of aircraft. The approach is a normal one. During roundout, addition of a little power may help control the touchdown and touchdown point. Although touchdown is made close to a stall, keep enough speed to permit full control with the main gear rolling on as lightly as possible. After touchdown, power can be added to lighten the load on the nose gear to keep it from digging into the soft surface. Once again, make a normal approach using appropriate flat setting. When rounding out, Add power as necessary to assure a light touchdown. Keep the weight off the nose wheel and the aircraft rolling until you reach firm ground. Pilots who fly cross country may want to land at airports with shorter than normal runways. During flight planning, be sure to check the owner's manual for the short field procedures recommended by the manufacturer. Check for power and flap settings, remembering these figures are valid for hard surfaces only. The runway in these takeoff and landings is 2,400 feet long and was dry. Slow the aircraft down on base leg, turning into final with flaps partly extended and pre-landing checklist completed. On final, slow the aircraft to approach speed. Extend full flaps. Maintain a steep approach path.
Adjust power and pitch in a coordinated manner as necessary to maintain the flight path. If gusty conditions are present, add about half of the gust factor to approach speed. Aim to touch down near the approach end of the runway. Airspeed control is critical. When touchdown at the desired spot is assured, ease the throttle back, round out, and touch down at full stall. When the nose wheel touches, keep the wheel back, using brakes to stop as soon as possible. In preparing for a short field takeoff, check the owner's manual on the proper procedures as recommended by the manufacturer. Flap setting. Best angle of climb speed. Clear. When the takeoff preparations have been completed and the traffic pattern is clear, taxi onto the runway. In some circumstances, it may be best to continue right into the takeoff roll. Accelerate as rapidly as possible. Begin rotation for liftoff as best angle of climb speed approaches. Continue at best angle of climb speed until all obstructions have passed. At that point, ease the nose down. Accelerate to the best rate of climb speed and continue to climb to cruise altitude. Let's review the short field landing procedure. During the approach, come in as steeply as possible, slip, add flaps, or adjust power as appropriate to your aircraft in order to maintain alignment with the selected touchdown spot. During your approach, this spot will not appear to move up or down. Maintain approach speed. Aim for your spot until you start rounding out. Ease the power off and round out, touching down right at full stall. Short field takeoff and landing procedures are more than just another set of maneuvers. Like all aspects of good airmanship, perfection comes from knowledge, planning, and practice. Virtually anyone who flies will, from time to time, find it necessary to cope with a crosswind condition. In the following takeoffs and landings, the crosswind is averaging 15 miles an hour and varying 30 to 45 degrees from the right. The crosswind component is between 7 and 11 miles an hour. It's good practice to keep the aircraft on the center line of the runway. The flight controls are used as necessary during the takeoff roll and initial climb out to maintain the flight path along the center line. Since we have a right crosswind, we'll use full right aileron at the beginning of the takeoff, reducing aileron as the control effectiveness increases. After liftoff, a gentle, coordinated turn establishes the crab angle for climb out along the runway center line. A common error during crosswind takeoff is failure to hold proper aileron just prior to and during liftoff. Another error is not setting up a crab angle after liftoff. Before landing, it's always necessary to establish the direction of the wind. At a controlled airport, of course, this information will be readily available by radio. Otherwise, look for the wind tees, wind socks, or other indications in the area, like dust, smoke, waves on ponds, or sailboats. Under normal conditions, this would be the optimum flight path. However, failure to anticipate the effect of a tailwind component will result in overshooting the center line and will require S turning to line up on final. A headwind component on base leg may cause the unwary pilot to make a long, 
shallow, and low turn to final approach. Crosswind landings seem to create more apprehension than others. This may be due to the unnatural aircraft attitudes involved. Pilots should be assured, however, that crosswind landings are quite normal and the aircraft is designed for them within specified limitations. However, if the crosswind component is approaching 20% of stall speed, pilots are advised to divert to more suitable runways or airports. There are three methods used to compensate for crosswind. Crab into the wind so that the flight path continues straight with the center line of the runway. Or you can establish a slip, which means lowering the wing into the wind to compensate for the drift and thus continue a straight path to the runway. Or you may combine the techniques of crabbing and slipping to maintain a center line approach. Your approach speed should be normal except when the wind is gusty. Then, of course, you must add in about one half of the gust factor. Before reaching the roundout, change from a crab to the slip to compensate for drift. Your attitude during roundout is wing low on the upwind side of the airplane. Rudder is used to prevent a turn resulting from holding the wing low. Use the controls as necessary to make a normal landing. After landing, increase aileron as necessary to keep the wings level and to aid in directional control. In both takeoffs and landings, the goal is to keep the center line of the aircraft aligned with the center line of the runway.